Procedures It touches upon a few key points of what is a SOP, what is a work instruction and how do we write them. The sequence of information in this video is organized into these slots. Let us have a look at the documents for GCP compliance. There are two kinds of documents used to manage and maintain compliance to regulations and GCP. These documents are instructions and records. Instructions provide guidance on how a process should be conducted. It includes the whole system of procedural documents, which includes SOPs, work instructions, etc. Records provide evidence that the instructions have been followed. Let us look at the difference between an SOP and a work instruction. Standard Operating Procedure SOP, detailed written instructions to achieve uniformity of the performance of a specific function, and tend to be broad in nature. Working Instructions Working instructions are process flows which give guidance on how to do a particular task in the SOP, and can be more detailed. Here is how to write a procedural document. The first step towards writing the SOP is to map the process end-to-end. -end. Identify the logical sequence of steps and the key stakeholders, keeping in mind the applicable laws and regulations. Identify the responsibility of each stakeholder. Then look at the whole process to identify areas where there are gaps, if any and how you will address them. Look out for any areas of potential non-compliance to the process, this is your risk area. Also, think of what records need to be maintained to provide proof that the process has been followed. Use the process map and groundwork that was done to create the SOP. The elements of the SOP must cover the purpose and scope of the procedure. The SOP must outline clear tasks and responsibilities. If any of the tasks need to be defined in greater detail, a working instruction can be used. The working instructions must have a process flow. Remember to define the document owner. The document owner is responsible for maintaining the life cycle of the document. Ensure that key stakeholders are part of the review and approval process. Follow your internal process to get the document signed off and archived. After your document is signed off, ensure that it has an effective date and is circulated to the stakeholders. Ensure that the users are trained by the appropriate method example, face-to-face -face training, self-study, etc., and this training is documented. Ensure that the users maintain their training records for key operating procedures. There are some additional points to keep in mind for SOP authors. Procedural documents must be crisp and concise. Be well versed with the process and clarify any gaps before you begin to write the procedure. Agree on the document timelines at the beginning for writing, review and approval of the process. Use appropriate wording for the titles so that a first-time reader can know the purpose of the document immediately. Ensure that the content has a logical flow and links to the theme well. Do not allocate, to the extent possible, one responsibility to multiple stakeholders. One stakeholder per task leads to better ownership. Do not allocate any responsibility to an external individual or institution. SOPs belong to the organization and should define responsibilities allocated to the members within the organization. Make your instructions as unambiguous as possible. Avoid using jargon, clarify all terms. Use terminology consistent with what is used at the institute or organization. Reference it accurately. Sample SOP structure is as follows. There are some additional points to keep in mind for procedural document managers. Every document must have a clear numbering and identification system with unambiguous version control. Create a system such that the current version of any procedural document is easily available to the users. Maintain obsolete documents so as to be able to provide in times of an audit or inspection. 
create a life cycle for your documents, how often should you review effective procedures and process for review of documents, conditions for update or retirement of documents. So with this you should be able to write your own SOPs or procedural documents. Good luck!